this a game or is it real? What's the difference? Okay, mic's on. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Barcode Live, live from Sin City, where tonight I'm joined by a security legend. Having been in the industry since 83, he's evolved into one of the world's top experts on security, privacy, info war, cyber terrorism, and related topics. Ladies and gentlemen, writer, lecturer, teacher, and just a straight up badass dude, Quinn Schwartow. Thank you. Whoa, thank you. Thank you. That was overly kind. Most of it was bullshit. That was chat GPT, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thanks for joining me, man. Uh, did you recognize that sound clip? Could you hear it? No, I couldn't hear it. I mean, I don't have my hearing aids in, and Barry wasn't helping. Gotcha. <laughs> that was War Games. Oh, was it? Well, what, what, which part was that? I didn't hear the, what words were being used. Is this a game, or is this real? Oh. What's the difference? When Matthew so, Broderick is sitting down, shall we play a game? That's it. And I yes. thought that was very relevant. We are going to gonna end up there, I think. If we get this discussion going, all right, let's get it going because speakers about are working. Playing a game, maybe, right, Mike? What's your favorite hacker movie? You know, I I really do like war games, but I also remember back in '95, I went with my wife to see Hackers, mm. and I walked out halfway through it, and now it's one of my favorites <laughs> because <laughs> I, I it was back in '95 we were taking shit so seriously about what the perception of the hacking community was. Yes. And so much of that was so distorted, but in retrospect, it's a, it's a lot of fun, and I, I, I enjoy it. And there's a few people in there, I think many of us actually know who they are supposed to be representing. That's right. So, yeah, the reason I played that clip, because I think it's very relevant to um, what we're going to talk about today. And um, What's just that? De defining the meaning of reality. Oh, my God. All right. So uh, it's an area that you've been focused on recently uh -huh. and um, called the Meta War Project. The and it's a story and challenge of reality distortion. Yes. So, uh, yeah, tell us more about this. I need to hear this. Well, it, it didn't begin that way. Um, when I started playing with the Meta War thesis roughly two years ago, was it, Mark? I don't know, when we started kind of bullshitting in London about it. And I thought that I was going to be looking at the metaverse and doing the technology and the security and the privacy and the bolts and the nut and all the stuff that we're all very used to doing. Uh, several months into the project, I had the first spin of... Everybody know the word metanoia? Metanoia, not paranoia. Metanoia, I started having... Um, the, this catharsis, realizing I, the metaverse and what I was working on wasn't so much about technology. And my worldview shifted that as we're doing immersive technology and reality distortion, what we're really talking about is what it means to be a human being. Mm. How do we put together the silicon systems with our carbon systems? And I tend to look at the universe is through a time lens and some of the answers started coming out and many of them are very disturbing mm -hmm. uh, some of them are exceedingly enlightening and for those of you familiar with the uh, work of philosopher David Chalmers uh, he coined the term the hard problem what is consciousness and as I started playing more and more with the the meta war thesis mm -hmm. it became very very clear that we are right now on the edge of technology and human interaction where we are going to be no more able no longer able to really make a distinction between objective and subjective reality and that's the path that it's taken me for the last two years you have this theory broken down into six sections is that correct well, it didn't, again, it didn't begin that way. That, right. That, 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 uh, and that's how it evolved. It though. evolved okay. into, uh, I was very interested in the concept of VR, XR, 
and we had done some gaming work and some stuff over the years, kind of playing around with it. And so as the Meta War thesis came about, uh, it did end up in six steps. Okay. The first step is immersive experience. The second step is reality distortion. Third step is disinformation, which turns into manipulation. And when then you add reward, you get addiction and compliance. This is what we are building right now. This is what Google is building, what Meta Platforms Inc. is building, what they all think is going to be so cool is going to end up being the most powerful reality distortion addictive technology ever invented by man. And we seem to be okay with that. All right, so let's, let's walk through the six. So the first one you mentioned was immersive experience. Immersive experiences. Uh, a lot of people talk about the metaverse as though it's going to be uh, w- one of the visionary uh, concepts that came out of what Snow Crash, I believe it yes. was. And it's about an all-inclusive, all-immersive, if you'll, for lack of any other word, a holodeck, where the ability to distinguish between objective reality and subjective reality completely disappears. Mm-hmm. And so it began there, but that's not a reality in today's technology. So when I really started looking at reality distortion, if we think back 14,000 years, I kind of use that as the first date for the metaverse, because that is when, after the uh, Dryas event and the end of the uh, Ice Age, people started getting back together and talking. Okay. So if you have Homer sitting around a campfire in Greece, and he says, everybody... Close your eyes. I'm going to tell you the story of Odysseus. The object is to alter your reality in a good way. Storytelling. And that is one degree of immersiveness. Immersiveness has evolved in sophistication. Misinformation, disinformation has been part of it for thousands of years. But then technology started getting in the middle of it, and then it evolved really, really quickly in the last 120 years to the point that where we are today, uh, uh, fake news and text, uh, you've got Photoshop stuff. Is it real? Is it not real? And then deep fakes. So the degree of immersion is the only thing that has changed with the technology. But un- fundamentally... How many politicians do we hear that 42% of America says, yeah, that's absolutely right. No facts, no nothing. Mm. And that is an immersional technology that has gone through all of these steps and resulted in cultural compliance. And this is emerging, uh, emerging that you're talking outside of the form factors that we know today. Correct? This is, this yes is, and no. Okay. You can have... Is it going to be more immersive inside of a helmet? For me, no, because the latency issues make me sick. Mm, For a lot of people, it's absolutely fine. Um, Is the 70-degree IMAX, is that more immersive than a big flat screen? That's all about perception, human perception, and how we take in information in our senses. So it's not a one-size-for-all type of experience. Do you feel like there is enough study in this that we can understand what the true effects are of being immersed? No. It, uh, <laughs> neuroscience is really a very comparatively new field. Uh, arguably 20 years, Greg, uh, you know, close enough. And when you start looking at the uh, issues of information, disinformation, reality, distortion, I can find nothing super relevant much before 2019. Mm. So a huge amount of the work that I've been doing has been talking to people and reading and studying on exceedingly recent work. And the amazing thing is how much of the neuroscience work is actually proving and of validating many of the theories uh, that the metaverse thesis puts forth. Interesting. Um, all right, let's move to the second step which is reality distortion. Reality distortion, what what is real? What do you believe? Uh, Are you a believer? Now, do you have belief in absolute, absolute total belief, or you kind of sort of believe something and think it's sort of true? Reality distortion wants to mess with your perceptions and what you believe. 
So if you uh, end up in a VR environment or an, an interactive online environment, are you talking to that? How many people have fucked with G chat GPT engines just to do it? Of course we have, because we're all trying to learn. Sometimes they're very convincing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes once we learn how to pollute them a little bit, they become less convincing and a lot more, oh, that's a cool toy. So reality distortion, isn't only about the technology itself. It's Again, it's back to the individual human. How does that individual human respond to those sensory inputs and what conclusions do they reach as a result? And that's then you lead into the third of disinformation because mm -hmm. I mentioned uh, entertainment. When you go to the movies, you want to be entertained and kind of, okay, I'm going to believe Mary Poppins for the next two hours. Cool. <laughs> but then you go watch... Oliver Stone's JFK. Yeah. And 60, what is it, 68% of Americans think that is factual history. That is reality distortion through disinformation, except in that case it was misinformation because yes. it wasn't so much, it was not intentional to be evil. Yeah. It has ended up, as we've learned more from neuroscience, maybe he should have skewed the movie a little bit differently. And being able to dis discriminate between misinformation and disinformation is very important, even though the end results may be the same. Okay. So can you explain the difference between disinformation and misinformation, right, just mi so we level set here? All right, misinformation is, uh, I tell you, the 1922 uh, Yankees uh, hit uh, 412 home runs that year. Mm-hmm. There's a piece of data. Is that piece of data meant to mess with you? Or is it meant that I just was spouting some bullshit? Yeah. And so misinformation is more about sp spouting bullshit and not knowing your facts, not knowing what the hell you're talking about. Disinformation has intention behind it. Yeah, okay. So how does disinformation, misinformation, and man or manipulation in the metaverse differ from reality now as we know it? Well, we are, Autonomy. The, we are in the metaverse. These guys yeah. are in our metaverse right now. Yeah. There are a certain number of them out here who at one point in the last 10 or 15 minutes absolutely had 100% focus on our words and visual. And for those moments, you are in, totally embedded in your own personal metaverse with just audio and sight. Those are the only two senses. And then you go back and talk to Barry, unfortunately, or somebody else. <laughs> and you're shifting your sense of reality between our existence and your perception and then whoever you're sitting and talking with. So it's all different connotations of the metaverse mm. because it's all about storytelling. Technology is incidental. Yeah. I want to get back to, to what I mentioned earlier about the form factor. Like what we think of now as the metaverse, mm -hmm. there is a form factor involved. There is equipment involved. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the near future or the long-term future that it's going to become more of a natural feeling, a natural form factor for people to use? Absolutely. Uh, how many of you have read the recent July 25th Apple patents on reality distortion? That's Mark. only because I sent it to you. <laughs> Still counts. Still counts. Uh, if you look at the, April tw uh, sorry, the July 25th Apple patent, uh, it is not specifically on, was it the Vision Pro, I think is what they called it. Okay. It's how Apple is patenting the ability to pick up through the ears all of your biological signals to be able to use them in a feedback loop to generate a more distinct reality based upon your actions and your unconscious reactions to whatever stimulus you're being given. It was just patented less than a month ago. That is a mechanism for reality distortion because as soon as you introduce a feedback loop of any sort, the human element, the human person involved, the carbon existence, starts to lose some level of autonomy. Mm. And again, is, are we okay with this? Are we all right with it? Do you want to give away who you are? Do you want to give away your essence? And right now, it's legal, and I'll reference you the patent on how it's done. 
I'm just so glad you didn't say Google Glasses. <laughs> it's, it's coming back. Uh, g- g- Google, the, the research that's coming out of Google compared to the work that I have had the opportunity to see coming out of Apple, Google is a decade behind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Apple understands through an awful lot of effort and several billion dollars of research mm. what the loop, the sensory loop systems of the human being talking to the silicon systems and what is needed to completely fool the human existence. No. Okay, let's take it to the next step. Reward. All right, reward. Sounds positive. Nah, it sucks. No. <laughs> um, how many kids you know, whatever age, or adults that have no life, are playing endless games. The average gaming time is two hours and 38 minutes per day, per human, 12 billion hours a day of gaming for rewards. Now those rewards are typically pretty useless. You can't buy me a beer with them. They're effectively NFTs or bragging rights or some such intangible that has a meme level, a mental level of value that does not translate into our world. But that reward system exists. The second reward system is our internal feel goods. Every time Barry posts something and I go like, he gets this whole dose of feel good chemical in him. It's a little bit, just a little bit. But that little bit becomes more and more and more required. And what happens is his mental immune system starts to need it, starts to need it. And this is the addiction through reward that we're allowing hundreds of millions of kids to do right now. How many of you allow your kids to get addicted to uh, tech? How many of you are gonna admit it in public? I got cameras. All right, we're on Chatham House rules here. (laughs) The addictive level, and how many of you have, and I mean this seriously, how many of you have actually tried to pull them off Success level on a scale of one to five. Thumbs down, thumbs down. I got two threes. They're lying. All right. Two. So we have, again, I'm not making any of this shit up. We already have digital opioid addiction. We already have it. Yeah. Now we're going to take feedback-based biosensors and create content based upon what I like, what my body automatically, unconsciously reacts to. Mm. Do we want that? That's what we're building. I'm going to throw you an unexpected question. An unexpected question? I don't know the answer then. In terms of reward, since yeah. we're on the topic of reward, yeah. what are the benefits that the metaverse can provide? Oh, and- the metaverse, there's some really cool shit. All right, if you want to build a factory, go build a digital twin version ahead of time. Mm. Save a boatload of money. Really pre-engineer the damn thing out and stress the fuck out of it before you build it. Yeah. We can, that's one of the great things. One, I, I had this argument in Holland. I was going through, and the, the argument was, Barry, you need a heart operation really bad. So you have a choice. You can have... A doctor, 48 years old, and he's operated on 298 people and only three have died. Or you get a heart doctor who's 28 years old, who has never operated on a live human being, but in an immersive experience with tactile response, he has saved 4,000 digital lives by learning how to do it. Who do you want operating on you, Barry? You want the old guy who kills people. Fair enough. That's your, cho- <laughs> That's your choice. These are some of the things that are going to come out of the metaverse that are going to be great to be able to do training and experientials, especially when you have virtual tactil- tactility emerging and coming about. There's going to be some amazing things that can be done. I mean, I'd really rather have cops that are a lot more practiced at doing stuff in the metaverse, in some form of the metaverse, mm-hmm. before you know, putting their knee on somebody's neck for 11 minutes. There's an alternative, and the, we have the opportunity with some of this technology to actually be able 
to do some serious, serious good. Yeah. And your third option would be a robotic surgeon. Uh, that we, uh, the Da Vinci is still pushed by a surgeon's hands. Da Vinci is still... The, there is that man-machine interface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so whatever the combination is, we're going to have the abilities to do better training in so many areas. Are there any, any use cases that, that we haven't explored yet that's going to aid society? <laughs> uh, if you're in Florida, fuck no. <laughs> um, I think Florida is giving us an example of exactly what not to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, it, I'm not even going to go down that road. Yeah. Okay, all right. But, but it, it ends up back to the concept of what is freedom. Yeah. And f- freedom of uh, First Amendment speech, First Amendment read. Oh, shit, you mentioned Shakespeare. we got to ban those damn books now. And between Florida and Texas, I mean, can't we just get rid of them both? Oh, okay. Addiction. Addiction. Let's talk about addiction. All right. You you get those NFTs. You're addicted to NFTs because there's no real monetary value, but your brain learns of value, comparative value. Um, I have more NFTs than Kaylee. I must be a better... Oh, no. no, You're really a gamer, so I, I picked the wrong person there. So, hold on. NFTs... Non-fungible tokens. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard of NFTs in a while. It seems like, you know... But that's what a badge of honor is on any game. Yes. So my question to you is, are NFTs beyond what we know as NFTs? Can NFTs be any... Anything, NFTs any, be a, a concept, that, an idea. It is. That's all yeah. NFTs are. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jack Torsey's first tweet, what it sell for $2 million and they can't give it away for 7 bucks now on eBay? <laughs> yeah. Um... NFTs, when you don't have a tangible value or an economic system that has a conversion fiat to existing economic systems, uh, there's some problems. Yeah. Uh, but kids don't know. Bragging rights is so important to the mental stability of kids and to many, many adults. Uh, in, especially in this community, that there's a whole spectrum of people on various... We're all nuts in some ways. Mm-hmm. And this is our home to be able to do this. And so we're all going to have slightly different ideas of what actually has value. Uh, when we give away a badge for Hacker Jeopardy, is there real value in that? Nah, it's fucking bragging rights. But they're cool bragging rights, and at least here is a thing. Symbol. Here is a little thing. Yeah, yeah. But when you're dealing with mental constructs, this is a whole new game that we don't fully understand. Yeah. What does the metaverse mean for mental health? Huh. For the good mental health or bad mental health? Uh, There are certainly some great applications. Uh, I don't think they're ready for prime time yet for in psychology and mental health. Uh, We're inching towards it. We're seeing a lot of the mental health professionals and uh, the psychological folks talking to each other about how can I create an environment? Can I create a safe space? Uh, Go back to the 70s with immersion tanks. And, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. in the salt water of the perfect temperature, just like the Dead Sea over in Israel, and then um, oh, and peace and love. Yeah. And there has been good reports. And then there was that movie when the guy turned into a she wolf, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. It was see called that Altered States. If anybody remembers that movie from Altered 1981, <laughs> shitty movie. And so yeah, mental health. Yes, absolutely can be done. How to do it? Is there a defined way of a prescription that'll get you from A to Z? No. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of the very recent, in the last 18 months, immersion systems are now fully ambisonic, tactile, and they offer visual components. Mm. Um, Is it the perfect answer? No. Is it 100% immersive holodeck? It depends upon how much you're going to allow yourself to be fooled. Yeah. And which is an acceptable answer. So yes, there are some great positives there, especially for PTSD and what have you, to be able to do, uh, put people in environments that will recondition and decondition yes. what they have been through. Because you've got to keep in mind one most important thing that essentially who we are is a result of emotional 
things that have occurred to us throughout our lives that have struck an unconscious memory system in the deep-seated parts of our brain around the amygdala, over which we have how much control and we don't know the answers to all of that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what does the metaverse mean for physical health? I, I think if, I, I have never thought of that, but uh, the immediate thing I would think of is somehow you're going to have exoskeletons, uh, the robotics. The, uh, people are talking about the digital simulacry and, and the synthetic humans. Yeah. The, these are going to be different technologies that are coming together. I have not looked at exoskeleton and the physical aspects of it at all. I have been looking and been sucked down to looking at the brain function. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I have no doubt there will be some great opportunities there because a certain amount of those functions, if you look at uh, deep brain stimulation, deep brain stimulation is giving people mental control over physical objects. Mm. Is that the metaverse? For them, that may be their metaverse because now for the first time in 20 years, they've got freedom to yeah. interact with the physical universe. That's an entirely new reality for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, th there is no hard definition. We're all going to have to really start coming to terms that this is a completely stochastic, uh, probabilistic, there are no hard answers. There's no yeah. Yeah. on-off binary condition here. In terms of addiction, do you think people in the future will encounter an involuntary addiction, meaning that... Uh, addiction is involuntary. I mean, incorporating or not incorporating a metaverse. The metaverse... It, again, the metaverse is a fluid dynamic. It, yeah. The metaverse is today. It could have been yesterday. It could be listening to the pictures. You've seen the pictures of 1930s families during the Depression. They all get together and they watch the speaker on the big box listening to the radio plays. They're immersed into that. Ex that is as much the metaverse yeah. as getting into a helmet with ambisonics today. It's just different tech. Because if you go back, uh, and I forget the year, Benny Goodman uh, and Edison both did experiments at, uh, in New York trying to tell the difference between, to a lay audience, the difference between the sound on a 78, Mm -hmm. RPM, crappy record, mm -hmm. and a live orchestra. And unless you're tuned and learn through experience the difference, yeah. oh, sure, they sound the same. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's completely fluid. There are no hard answers. But it's going to get more addictive, and it's going to get more addictive. Have any of you read any of the addiction notes published by Google and or Meta Platforms, Inc., where they openly admit that what they're doing is for addictive purposes. Read my book. It's coming out soon. I know. I had to get the it's plug in list. there. Come on. It's on my with, list. Work with me there. <laughs> and the name of the book is? The name of the book, shit. What? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it, it's the art and science of meta war, and then there's a subtitle that we've been massaging, and I haven't, I don't remember it. Okay. All right. But it does tie in AI manipulation. It, it ties all of the future tech together in this analysis of what has been going on and what is going to be happening. Okay. Well, we're on the last step. Uh-oh. Compliance. By the time I have you under my reward system and you're addicted, mm -hmm. you're wearing a red hat, aren't you? That's, that's it. I mean, it's that simple. I, it, we're seeing this happen. We've seen it happen for the last eight years of, of what happens with addiction and compliance. Mm. And it's all a mental construct. Is there any governance in this space now? No, very little. There is, um, I spent a fair amount of time in Europe discussing these I, ideas uh, because... Europe is a lot more open mm -hmm. to these kinds of things. And I learned a great deal, met with a number of neuroscientists over there. And the reaction that I got, oh, I did one for the Canadian government too. And the European uh, folks that I met with out of the European Commission, they want in. Mm. Uh, the Canadian Department of Privacy and something, they want in. <laughs> I think that we're going to, uh, when this project comes out, 
and you, you see there's a film crew here because they're working on a, a documentary about this. Um, I think the biggest initial resonance will probably be in uh, Canada and EU, uh, maybe the UK, uh, I don't know, but definitely the EU Commission has addressed this. They've already addressed uh, uh, the issues of AI, explainable technology, and they've already lambasted Meta Platform Zinc with a lot of fines. So uh, I think we're going to see more potential action over there, especially when it comes to addiction and compliance. Does that matter? Is that important? If I don't do anything, I have chosen to fail. That's last call here at Virgil's. So I have one more. You got time for one more? Where am I going? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) If you opened a cybersecurity or metaverse-themed bar, what would the name be, and what would your signature drink be called? Oh, fuck. I didn't tell you this one was coming. No, no. <laughs> uh, open up. I mean, I know what my son's bar is supposed to be called. Um, uh, uh, well, is there a dot meta? Is there a TLD with dot meta yet? Anybody? I mean... M- Meta, I, I don't know. I think that's going to be a... Con- Mike, we need to do a contest on that. Okay. When, when is going to open a meta bar? We have to work on that over drinks tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Not dot meta yet. There you go. Otherwise, Meta Platforms, Inc. You're, you notice I'm being exceedingly careful about talking about Meta Platforms, Inc. Because they, they are using the word meta... And uh, in all with Meta War and everything I'm working on, I actually had to call my lawyers. And I go, what the fuck? How, how fast am I going to get in trouble with this? My own take was it's a Greek prefix, and some naming fool down there said, oh, this is a good name to allow everybody to troll us with. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with that. So all stick right. this Meta where the sun don't shine. <laughs> all right, so what are you serving there? Is it, is it going to be... A virtual drink? Are you serving reality drinks? What are you serving there? What's your signature drink there? How intoxicated are you when you're coming in? Okay. So do you have to get a breathalyzer on your way in? Well, it has to be on a spectrum, you know, of course. There's okay. no single answer. Okay. Um, because I think it, I mean, if you're at a certain they, level, your already reality is wait, distorted. Don't they in the hotels out here have the virtual bars, the air bars where you put on the mask? Yes, and they do. And so if you take one of those and then you add the kissing element to the helmets now, okay, uh, you could actually have an awful lot of fun. You could make everybody do Darth Vader virtual drinks. I don't know. I have not thought about opening a bar in many years. I love it. But I thank you for that. Yes, let's that get on question. it. Let's get on it. Is that a real question, Barry? <laughs> Wait, you, you could be in your hotel room the entire time at the Meta Bar. That's how you get there. Wayne, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Take care. And uh, appreciate all the knowledge, oh, man. Thank you. WinSchwartel.com, check it out. Do you have links for the book on your site? To um, the project? I think so, somewhere. Okay. We're, we're working on it. Come see when. He'll direct you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.